What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. I'm in the battle station. It's been about two weeks. Let me give you, Eugene, an update on your computer, buddy. 40 terabytes. So I posted the YouTube video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. I can now point to that and put it down below, it's there. Um, basically a lot of people, I do post a lot of videos, so a lot of people were like, whoa Vic, what's going on with this battle station? That'll be for another video. This video right now, we're gonna be giving Eugene an update on his computer and the headaches that I've been dealing with so far. First, I wanna bring you in closer to Eugene's computer. Basically, this is what it looks like after it's unboxed, booted, and set. This is almost what it will look like going in the bar top ignore the wires don't worry about the wires it will be cleaner but basically we have the motherboard graphics card everything our main heart is here we have our big power supply which is pretty big but i'll make it fit inside the bar top and as you can see we have one two three of the 10 terabyte hard drives and i have the small samsung five terabyte there these are mine these won't be there so again computer posted booted we're working on some hyperspin work right now. So Eugene, your computer is up, running, and good to go. Eugene messaged me yesterday. I should be expecting a package today as he bought two more um, 16 gigabyte uh, RAM sticks. So that's gonna be wild. So now I'm making this video because I posted the video like 40 terabytes, you know, we're talking about this and a lot of people and my past customers were like, whoa, Vic, 40 terabytes, I want an update. Like, you know, what's going on? I wanna play, I wanna play, I wanna play. I'm really gonna talk about first how I obtained this hard drive and second, if it's really worth it or not. Now what I mean by is it really worth it or not, there is a plus and minus to this kind of setup. Um, I've known about emulation, especially with like talking about Xbox 360 and the PS3. Um, it is worth it in the end, long story short, it is worth it, but there are some hiccups, especially, I mean, it's a given thing when it comes to emulation. Now, real quick, I wanna let people understand how I obtained this drive. So about three weeks ago, and if you don't know me, you could literally message me, people message me on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, and they ask for help. I know Hyperspin, I know PC build, I know how it works, so I had a customer about a month ago message me and said, hey Vic, I obtained this drive, I bought this guy's drive, it was about 40 terabytes worth of data, but some of the ROMs didn't work and some of the games didn't boot, can you help me? So I said, yeah, give me the drives and I'll help you out. It was literally to a point where like, he told me like only MAM Arcade worked. So it was kind of odd. And I said, let me take a look at it. I could help you out. So anytime you give me a drive, number one, the first thing, number one, is that I personally will make a backup of your drive. What does that mean? I'm gonna literally copy and paste your drive. I always do that because God forbid something happens and I lose info, I always have a backup. So check it out real quick. This is what it resulted into. It basically resulted in me getting three more 12 terabyte drives. I've always had about 20 terabytes on the side, but with this guy's drive, I had to go all out. As you can see, this is kind of like my workbench, test bench. That's my Dell Optiplex. That's for a, a newer budget build I have coming up. This is kind of my mess that I'm doing with right now. So it took me literally about like two weeks just to copy and paste the drive because that's the first thing that I do. It's, I'm, I'm balancing a little bit, but it also brings me to a big thing that's driving me nuts. And it was in the beginning with Eugene's drive. Windows, the version of Windows, whatever it is, the most recent one is an emulation killer. What I mean is that I don't know what Windows did, but they got smart because I guess, I mean, it's not just about emulation, but they got smart. Before I start, I have my own personal five terabyte drive that I know for a fact is a copy and paste with a little bit of modification. So I know that that works. So when I first did Eugene's drive, I took my main drive, copy and pasted it, launched Hyperspin, launched MAME Arcade, and it worked. I exited MAME, all of a sudden, everything dropped. I went back to desktop, and I don't know what happened, but I lost all of my executable files. I lost Hyperspin, I lost Rocket Launcher. I don't know what happened, but Windows, its current update is a killer. With that in mind, I was like, I don't, I, I, it took me about three or four days to research it. Basically on Eugene's build, we downgraded to a lower version of Windows 10. So Eugene, don't worry, you don't have to worry about it. I literally deleted 
and disabled the possibility of even Windows Update happening and Windows Defender because that those two combinations are just brutal, at least on these drives. So don't worry about that. That's a killer right there. It's a good segue to tell you what happened now with the other guys. So basically I copy and pasted it. That's why I always say I always have to make a backup. Made a backup and on his drives, he had internals. Um, so I actually had to open up my Dell Optiplex and copy it and I put it to externals. I launched Hyperspin, same thing. I, I didn't even play a game. I just launched Hyperspin and exited. I lost everything. All executable files you can think of, I lost it. Rocket Launcher, Hyper HQ, Hyper Marquee, I lost everything. So I don't know what it is about Windows, but be careful on newer Windows. And if you try to launch Hyperspin drives, it's a wrap. Which partially was an issue when it came to this guy's drive. So now again, I'm this build right now is going to be really based off of that guy's drive. So I don't sell drives. I don't buy drives because I think he spent like 500 bucks on that drive, but it's worth it if it works and it doesn't, it's not worth it if it doesn't work. So basically this is how I'm obtaining this 40 terabyte drive. Yes, I did copy somebody's drive. It's not mine. I don't know who made the original drive, but it's a copy. With that being said though, it's not just a simple copy and paste, put it on Eugene's drive and ship it. No. What I do now, and this always happens, especially in the past when I've always gotten people's drives, is that each drive, people's drives have different ROMs, different emulators. And basically what I'll do is that I will take just that small section, meaning I'll take the emulator, I'll take the ROMs, I will put it on my test bench and I'll test it. If the ROM and the emulator work with at least about maybe 15 games, I will then copy and paste. But if you know Hyperspin, it's not that easy. You can't just copy and paste. Now you gotta go into Hyperspin, you have to adjust, make the modules and all that. So none of this shit is easy. Please don't message me saying that it's an easy copy and paste because it's not. So with that, on his drive, we obtained the Switch, we obtained the Xbox 360, Xbox Live, Xbox One, PS3, and so on. So what I'm basically doing now is that I'm taking it piece by piece and sending it to Eugene's drive. For Eugene's drive right now, the first thing I did when I sat down was that I copy and pasted the PlayStation 3 ROMs and the Xbox 360 ROMs. Only cause you're talking 16 terabytes alone. It's eight terabytes for PS3, eight terabytes for the 360. So I literally just did that. Cause I knew for a fact that copying that much terabytes is gonna take a while. So surprising with his computer is very fast. Um, eight terabytes for the Xbox 360 took one day, literally 24 hours to transfer eight terabytes from an external to his internal. So I was very shocked with that. So I'm kind of working backwards a little bit on Eugene's meaning I took the ROMs. I'm going to test now with the emulator and if it works, we'll put it. So real quick, I'm going to bring you real quick to Eugene's computer. I right now have the Xbox 360 emulator loaded. I could basically come here, try to test and load a game and we loaded a game. So some people now they assume, oh shit, it's perfect, it works, good to go, I'm gonna call it a day. Not necessarily, especially when it comes to the 360 and the PS3, because that's what I noticed, is that basically the guy from the drive I'm, I'm, I copy from, he got sold the idea that he could play Xbox 360 and all that. And unfortunately, it is not true. So now real quick, we can load up a couple of games. I have the PS3 emulator up here, so um, a lot of games. I don't even know the account I'm at right now, but real quick, we'll try to load up like God of War. So basically a quick double click and it booted. This is the Japan version of God of War 3. And as you can see, we are getting boots. We are getting games loaded and stuff like that. With that being said, I mean, again, it's just a quick update. Um, I wanted to show off some of the stuff. Um, some people are gonna see this video and go, oh shit, he was able to load up God of War 3. How does it play? How does it play? How does it play? I'm right now gonna wait for Eugene's RAM to show up as there is a big thing that comes down to emulation, especially with the newer systems, really aiming towards the 360 and the PS3 and the Nintendo Switch. Basically what I'm getting at is that emulation is still in progress every day there's reddit posts and there's github posts that people join in as a community and try to fix this emulation long story short i would probably say 
about half of the Xbox 360 games that I have on these drives are playable and I would say about half the PlayStation 3 games are playable. Um, so real quick, long story short, like I said, I copied the ROM, I loaded the emulator, and then I tried to play a game. So for example, on the Xbox 360, I tried to play uh, 50 Cent. It's a 50 Cent game, Blood on the Sand or something like that. And it would work, it posted, just like actually the video I just snapped. It posted, it worked, it boots. Once it tries to start a game, boom. It just freezes, it's done. And I'm like, oh shit, is the computer slow? Like what's happening? And basically if you sit down and you really research it, there's a GitHub um, compatibility list and there's some games that work and some games that don't. It literally will tell you it hangs at the start menu or it freezes when you press start. So keep that in mind. People will try to sell you hard drives. They're gonna try to sell you these things. It plays PS3, it plays Nintendo Switch, but in all honesty, the emulation right now is not even perfect for you to play it. Now you're gonna say, hey Vic, you know, is it worth Eugene having this? Yes and no. Yes, it is worth it because he has all the ROMs. Luckily with these emulators, there's always updates. There's literally like weekly updates. So if you really think about it, he could launch the emulator on the side and update. And who knows, it might actually work. So if you think about it, yes, he has the ROM. It's more about, it's more about the emulator needs to be updated to make it work. So it's kind of like future proofed. Yes, he does have the ROMs, it's good to go. We just gotta wait for the emulator to pick up and update. I'm really saying this because I posted on my Instagram, um, I couldn't believe it, even myself, but I tested it on my Dell Optiplex and I was kind of excited. We got Luigi's Mansion 3 to work and it booted. I'm using the Yuzu emulator and it booted and I was like, oh shit, it booted. I could play Luigi's Mansion 3. So I'm gonna try that on his build as his computer is more powerful um, I didn't look at the GitHub or the compatibility list on Luigi's Mansion 3, but again, this video is just a little quick update as far as Eugene and the process that we're doing with the hyperspin build. I honestly shot this like four times because I feel like I'm everywhere. Basically, to sum this up, it's going to be a beast of a system. It's going to be insane. And it's for me personally to let people know from my experience what I know will work and won't work. As of right now, like it's crazy, and I'm gonna do it in another video, like looking at Xbox 360. The 50 cent game for the Xbox 360 won't boot, but it does boot on the PlayStation 3. And all honestly, from what I'm seeing right now, the PS3 emulator, I would say it's like 75% flawless. Like I was literally playing that 50 cent game before. I'm gonna do that in a different video. I don't wanna make these videos too long, um, cause I noticed that I'm hitting like 20 minute marks. But all in all, Eugene, this PC is gonna be insane. You're gonna have a shitload of games and you're gonna be future-proofed for when emulators do update. So now real quick, I'm gonna show you what I was talking about. I right now have um, the Xbox 360 emulator up. I have my Xbox controller here and we're loading up right now again, 50 cent. It's literally the first game I picked because it's right on top. I'm gonna to press start. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So here's the thing. Um, basically, this has to be done with each game. If I press A, it's looking for a storage device. Um, there is a hard drive connected to the Xbox, obviously. We're just gonna press cancel. We're gonna press continue. And basically, as you can see, I'm gonna be able to go through this. I could pick easy, and it says something about private game. I'm gonna pick my sidekick. And now here's what happens. Just like in the GitHub, the screen, I'm stuck. There is motion in the background. So it's not like there's the screen's frozen. It's not like the emulator crashed. It's just whatever it is, this emulator right now on the GitHub, it even says that it's just not playable. So I'm checking out, I'm literally on my computer here. I have the GitHub here and I looked up 50 cent. Look at this, 50 cent blood on the sand, state yellow menus. So what's pretty cool is that basically you could come here and this is usually like updated. And as you can see, people show this, they show it and then boom, look hangs on loading screen. That's exactly what we're dealing with right here. And it's basically just the emulator is not emulated. It's not perfect enough to play this game and such. So as you can see, I strongly suggest, and I'll, I'll include the GitHub in the description. I strongly suggest that you basically 
look at this list to make sure you want to play it. But now though, with that being said, I'm going to load up the PlayStation 3 50 cent. And this again is another thing I talked about in my last video in a past video, an older video that as you can see, there's a, there's a ROM for the Xbox version. There's a ROM for the PS3 version. You're basically wasting space on duplicate versions. So now as you can see right now, we are loading up the PlayStation 3 version. I am using the Xbox One controller. So I let this kind of go through. Low my audio because my wife is working. Now check this out. This is what's crazy. I'm gonna play this game. And entering this mode. And there's actually music. In the Xbox 360 version, the emulation wasn't good enough. There was no music. We passed the screen. We're actually in a loading screen right now. And I did test this. I was able to play. Look at this. So we're running PlayStation 3 right now. I'm doing this with one hand. I mean, it's shocking because there is no... I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm trying to play with one hand. It's shocking because there's no stutter on this emulation. This emulation is actually very cool and it's playable. But as you can see, like the PlayStation 3 version booted. The Xbox 360 version did not. So something to think about. I'm just going to check this out. And I'll do some over the shoulder stuff. But as you can see, we're actually playing 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so far, the PlayStation, the PS2, and this, I've ran about maybe five games out of this, and it did work, and it does play well. Um, let me just kick this guy's ass. Oh, I'm blocking the center on that. As you can see, there's like a compiling shader thing. I'm literally trying to do this with one hand. <laughs> it's not going up, it's just me doing it with one hand. But there you go, look at that, PlayStation 3 on that. Now remember though, you seeing that right now does not mean PlayStation 3 is flawless and it works and oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I'm um, right now, uh, the first game I did test was God of War 3. That did have stutter, but it was playable stutter. So it did slow down and then it picked up. And honestly, I don't think it's a PC issue. It's an emulation issue because going back to the GitHubs, you will see that's what it is. It also brings me really, if you think about it, because I was using it before, it brings me to like Citra. Citra is like the 3DS emulator. And on the emulator face itself, it actually shows you if the game is playable. So real quick, I literally have it's 1600 Nintendo 3DS ROMs in this. And check it out. Look at this. So we have here, like for example, um, I don't know, let's take a look here. See like here, 3D Fantasy Zone, red intro menu. 3D Echo Dolphin plays perfectly. So this emulator actually even tells you it. So again, if you think about it, this one is actually telling us like, hey, this ROM will play perfect. Some of them are not tested. So if you really think about it, it's not really a decision on if the computer is slow enough. You do need basic hardware and good hardware to run most of this stuff, such as honestly PlayStation 3, if you don't have a dedicated graphics card or a system like this, I guarantee you my Dell Optiplex would not be able to play PS3. Um, but you could see it. I mean, you could have the best computer in the world, but it also depends on the emulator and how the ROM is emulated. With that being said, VigVP, GameCase Arcades. Next up, I mean, again, every day I tackle a new emulator. Um, Next up is really trying to get Sega Ring Edge, the Techno Parrot emulator to work on this and so on. So that's another headache, I got a challenge, but we're making progress. Real quick, cause I'm here, take a look at this. This right here is the rocket launcher file from the person's um, 40 terabyte that I copied about a month ago and check this out. We literally have 410 systems. That is bonkers. That is a insane amount of systems. And no, I would not, this is, this is not happening for Eugene. We're not just gonna give you 410 systems because I can imagine the hyperspin wheel, what it looks like. 
It probably looks insane and crazy packed. So no, we're not doing that. So as you can see, like a 40 terabyte, it literally came out to 400 systems, like 400 systems, like how? How do you have 400 systems? It's kind of nuts. That's why like I said, I don't just copy and paste it. That right now is connected to one of the external drives that I copied from the other guy. So that's, that's not happening. On my cleaner version, I think I'm at 60 systems because in all honesty, there's a lot of shit systems on that and I'm not putting shit systems on Eugene's build.